The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm near Exeter, Ontario, catching up with Olivia Nuremberg from Pride Seeds. How's it going? Good. How are you, Bern? I'm really good. Uh, we are moving in to silage harvest, and it's that time of year we don't we want to talk about how we manage quality and how we manage the harvest. Um, where does that where does that conversation start with you? Yeah, I definitely feel like this year we've had some challenges with the weather. It's definitely been drier than the last couple of years. Um, and I believe that, you know, silage harvest will, will be starting here in the next probably yeah. two weeks. With that drought stress, there are um, some considerations, I guess, we have to make with silage harvest. Um, we're seeing a lot of variability in fields. Um, here I've just kind of pulled some ears from this field. Uh, you can see some poor pollination and even some barren plants uh, here and there. Um, which can make it a little bit di uh, difficult to time silage yep. harvest. Um, but I would say, you know, when we are trying to set ourselves up to make good silage, um, drought stress or not, we're going to try and, you know, aim for that proper plant moisture. That's kind of what our key, key target is for silage harvest. So kind of that 65 to 70% moisture. Um, and keeping an eye on that before we're we're heading to the fields and and getting into it. Yeah. So we're going to dig into the fundamentals here a little bit more in in a minute. But hey, I want to talk a little bit more about that drought stress mm -hmm. and what can happen when we get into a field like this. Um, I guess the first thing is that, that tonnage reduction. Yes. Yeah. So I would say with uh, with drought stress and silage specifically, uh, we're going to see some tonnage reduction. We're going to see some different kind of nutritional components. So we'll actually have some higher fiber uh, with our silage just because we're going to have lower starch with not having as much ears basically not as much uh, cob production so you can expect some lower starch there um, another thing is we'll actually have some higher nitrates as well uh, which can be a concern when we're feeding it corn to livestock so that's something to keep in mind as well so Olivia, let's talk more about quality um, and how we manage that quality, especially in a situation where we've got some, you know, some, some dry corn, maybe some stressed mm -hmm. corn going into the bunk. Yeah, so we want to make sure that we are harvesting at the proper moisture, like I said. So yeah, 30 to 40% dry matter is key. Um, when we get outside of that range, that's when we can have some issues with uh, spoilage and whatnot if it's too wet or too dry. Um, so that's where um, it becomes key. As well, when we're, we're storing the silage, the fermentation process will help with some of that nitrate, um, kind of lowering the nitrate load. So that is kind of key with some drought stressed corn, we will have some higher nitrate levels. Um, but when we do actually um, in silent in a bunk or whatnot, you're gonna reduce that nitrate load by around like 40 to 60%. Right. So that can really help um, and can still make good silage even if the nitrate values are a little bit higher. Right. Let's talk about uh, end of August here, 1st of September, growers are really starting to sort of dig into silage. What should they, you know, what should they be doing over the next couple of weeks? What's, what's, what, what's the protocol here? Yeah, I would say it's really key to get out in your fields and see what's going on. Um, what I would suggest is kind of, you know, breaking open those, those cobs and looking at what is the milk line pro progression, basically. Uh, so once we see, you know, like about half milk line to two thirds, um, that's kind of the time frame that we're looking at. Obviously, we do have variability in this field, uh, and that's what we will see in a lot of drought stress right. fields. So maybe sometimes that isn't the most accurate way of getting an idea of what the moisture is. Um, so what I would also suggest, and what a lot of uh, farmers will do, is they'll take, you know, five to 10 stalks. Um, they'll cut them, they'll bring them to their, their dealer. There's a lot of dealers that do chipper days and whatnot, then those will get kind of sent to the lab and they can give you a better idea of what the whole plant moisture is. Exactly. And uh, I feel like this, I mean, uh, you can be all over the map. You've got to make a decision, right? Depending yeah. on, you know, <laughs> well, not the best part of the field or the worst part of the field. Yeah, I would say like you're aiming for at least 75% of your field, like what's representative. So exactly. um, the other thing is if you do have some areas that are maybe more localized and worse than others, and maybe you're treating them separately and and maybe you're chopping those areas that maybe have dried down a little bit quicker before you're chopping maybe the rest of the field. Final question for you, that is uh, chop length, mm -hmm. given the situation in the corn that you're dealing with. I would say that sometimes you do hear that um, increasing chop height when you do have drought stress corn, uh, just because a lot of those nitrates, like I said, 
uh, drought stress corn can have high amount of nitrates. That is typically found in the lower part of the stalk, so a lot of people will be inclined to chop higher. The issue with that is we have some drought stress corn, it is a bit shorter already, so uh, lower tonnage at that point. Um, what I would say is, as I mentioned kind of earlier, if we're going to be ensiling it uh, and it's going to go through that fermentation process, that can reduce the nitrate load around 40 to 60 percent. And so my final thought is, you know, try and keep that chop height probably around the same. We don't want to raise it too high. We want to keep as much tonnage as we can. Um, and we can still make good corn silage with a drought stress crop. So, you know, there is research out there saying that, you know, we're still going to get a good crop. It's going to have some good uh, fiber digestibility, just some lower starch uh, and feed values, you know, around 60 to 70 percent of what maybe a normal non-stress crop is going to be. So that's key to dairy producers out there. Um, still good feed value. We're just going to have a little bit less of it tonnage wise with no. uh, with the drought stress. So Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Olivia, thank you for the tips. Always great to have you on the Corn School. Thank you, Vern.